Okay, so we kicked butt on this bathroom thing today. Got the shower box installed. Got wall board up, metal corner. So it is looking like a room now. We got the shower stall is largely mortared out. And tomorrow we'll put the mortar in the base. And after that, it'll be ready for red guard and all that. There is the shelf. We have a large lower shelf for shampoos and stuff. And a smaller one above for other things. Shaving, soap, whatever. There's the shower head is up here. And we skim coat everything with mortar and that just helps to seal it up a little better more water protection and then you put your red guard on and three coats of red guard and you are good to go good to tile no metal corners we just do mortared corners because they are going to be tiled over metal rusts and the metal expands and pretty soon you have rust and stain and tiles popping off and we don't want that so we just make sure that we press the mortar deep into the joint of the duroc and that's that so we've got more wallboard over on this side that's a piece that goes behind the toilet here Dave's trying to decide if he wants to put a window in behind the toilet or not. Decisions, decisions. So everything is coming along. We are going to wrap up. Uh, I'll wrap up what I'm doing here tomorrow. And Dave will be in the home stretch on getting this cabin of his finished. So things are looking great. Yeah, it's nice having that sheetrock out of the aisleway here. But now you went and filled it up again with plywood. Yeah, I didn't want that against the, yeah. the wall, the freshly painted walls, because somebody would have a come apart. Oh, true. Oh, boy. And there is the river. And it looks like it's got less silt in it. So we are going to start installing the base system with the sloping sticks for the Dick's shower base. And their system has, okay, remember this here is a plastic liner that's all welded together. We have the bottom half of the shower drain flange under the shower base and we put inch and a half butyl rubber plus another three quarter inch wide strip of butyl rubber and then set the base onto that and then we bolted the top half of the base down to it top half of flange down to it the flange kit bolts did not come with washers and we found that the washers were digging or the bolts were digging into the ABS so we went to the local hardware store and bought some stainless steel washers and now it bolted down nice and evenly. So here's their system. This is their weep collar and it goes on one way. And then this is the ring, the center ring. You see it has these holes on top and their guide sticks will set into that so you have to make sure that the hole in the rings are up because there isn't a hole in the bottom so that sets on top of that this is the drain connection and you will tile up next to that and when you do your mortar bed you'll do your mortar up to the bottom of it and then your tile will go the rest of the way 
and become flush. So this just sticks down through their weep collar and you snug that on down and it more or less centers that collar. So that is the system. So then you have all these little weep points in here that will drain out any water that gets under the mortar bed. Okay, so that is how the drain connects. And now we are going to get started on doing the um, sticks that uh, the guide sticks for laying out the mortar bed. And they're just sloped from the corners into the center and they provide a quarter inch per foot slope <clears throat> okay and as you see we did mortar everything last night skim coated all the walls and that seals up the walls better and then you put your red guard on that three quarter three coats of red guard and then you're ready to do tile and that is the curb. We put a top coat, skim coat of VersaBond mortar on this. Smoothed it out a bit. You see there are no metal corners here. We just shaped corners with mortar. We don't want metal because metal will rust and expand and cause problems. No metal on the bench edge here, too. That would be an especially bad place because it's the bench and it's most likely to get wet. And if you look, you can just see the slope on the bench. So, okay, let's get going. Okay. Here's Dave feverishly installing one of the last pieces of wallboard. And this is, we've got our sloping strips installed here. Most of the kits have eight. The smaller kits, I guess, have six. And so you can see how they slip down to that center ring. There's the uh, weep collar so that the water in the bottom of the basin drains out. This is the drain itself that you see in the shower. Leave the tape on there for when you mortar. It keeps mortar from going down the drain and if it's not on there put some tape on it. Cover it up so that you don't get mortar in the drain. Okay. We're going to just line the screws up, and there you go, you see it is nicely centered in there. And we are good to go. Just make a couple of reference horizontal lines in there with the marking pen so that uh, I know how high to put the mortar in those long stretches in between the sticks and things will look good. So we will be making up the dry mix with type S mortar suitable for wet locations and this is the stuff we're going to be using here type S mortar commercial grade quick read type S uh, somewhere it says that it is suitable for below grade that's the important thing is make sure you have mortar that 
is suitable for below grade wet location like a shower base okay we're gonna get started mortaring that up and the next time you see us we will have a finished mortar base Okay, so we have our first batch of mortar mixed up. You can see we have level lines drawn here. The lower one is the same as the guide sticks, and the upper one is a reference to the lower one. In case the lower one gets covered, we still have a second reference point. So I am going to put on my latex rubber gloves because I don't really care to have burns on my skin or not burns but just it's not good for your skin to have that uh, lime and calcium on you for too long and so we have a thick mix of mortar here and we are going to start placing it You did end up getting all that tape on the bottom, didn't you? Getting what? All that tape on the bottom. The bottom rim is taped. Oh, yeah, yeah. mortar or water then we can just add it okay so we're just going to kind of work the mortar here we're going to work it along these leveling sticks and press it in on both sides because there are round holes in the sticks and we want to have mortar from both sides making contact so that uh, we have a solid connection of mortar through the sticks. It's going to get slow here for a minute because this is about all I can do with the mortar I have at the moment. I'm speeding things up here and I am going to be narrating along for the next eight minutes. This is about uh, 45 minutes of video compressed down into eight minutes for your convenience. So you see we mixed up another batch of mortar and it's thick. You want to have your mortar thick. You don't want it slumping on you when you are trying to form it to the slope of the sticks in the shower drain. So I've uh, spread out uh, the rest of the mortar that was in that bucket. Dave is going to mix up another bucket. Now what I have here is I had Dave make me up a short 8-inch 2x4 block. And I'm using that to compact the mortar down into the corners. Because I want to make sure that it makes good contact in all the corners of the shower base. And so I'm going to be working it, and then the 2x4 also functions well as a bull float. And so I'm using my 10-inch trowel now. So I'm just going to kind of be spreading around the mortar. 
and we are following the slope of the guide sticks. You can see the guide sticks in there. And I'm using the drain, the center there, for a resting point for my hand, because I don't want to be putting my hand in the mortar and crushing, pressing things around, because you don't want the mortar mixing. And in fact, you want to, as soon as you get it set, you want to disturb it as little as possible, because even though it's very thickly mixed, when you move it, it itself will move. Uh, gravity will want to make the high points flatten down, so you want to make sure that uh, you saw those lines that I drew earlier, and you want to make sure that you have your mortar going level and flat along the line that is at the same level of the top of the sticks, the guide sticks, and so you see that I kind of press the towel, trowel flat against the wall there, and I'm going right next to the lower line, and I've got that upper line as a reference just in case mortar smears over and hides the lower line. Uh, things do happen. So I am uh, working each cell, I'm going to call it um, each area between sticks a cell, and I'm working each individual cell to kind of get a level with the mortar and uh, have it conform to the slope from the outer wall down to the drain. And we are going to have the mortar about a quarter of an inch below the drain. And what we're actually doing is bringing the mortar down to the drain and then you saw that round piece that the sticks all connect into. And that is uh, right under the drain. The drain actually screws down onto the top of it. So you can use that as a guide when you trowel at the drain. It's uh, about a quarter of an inch down from the top of the drain. And you just follow that circle around as a guide and get yourself a nice, flat, consistent level below the drain quarter inch below the drain. And then when you come to installing your tile, then you are going to put down some uh, uh, let me see what is the word I am looking for. Some thin set mortar, either flex bond, which I prefer, or versa bond, which is still a very good mortar, made by custom the same company. And the Thin set will stick to this Type S mortar, but it will sit under the tile, and between the thin set and the tile, that will raise the tile up so that the tile is just a little bit higher than the rim of the drain. So take your time when you're doing the tile in the floor and make sure that you have your finished tile just above the drain fitting, just above the edge of the rim. So you see I am working the cell there now over by the shower entrance, and uh, when you see me, um, uh, I'm troweling there, and in a minute you're going to see me starting to put the edge of the trowel along the drain and following that center circular hub that holds all the sticks as a guide for under the drain. So I am working the last cell now and uh, just adding a little bit mortar to it and so you see how I am uh, dragging the trowel over the mortar, mortar and I am checking for flatness of the mortar compared to the sticks. I don't want the mortar being humped between the sticks. So you see how I use the, uh, I flatten out the mortar and smooth it, and then I use the trowel to kind of shave out any humps in the mortar so that we have a nice flat surface. And if anything does need to be filled or contoured, that can be done in the last step when you tile the shower floor, 
with the inset mortar, that will take up any of the inconsistencies and flatten things out, make everything nice and smooth transitional. So there you see I am using the hub now to finish that little bit of mortar down by the drain. Things are going along very nicely. I'm using the um, sticks as a guide for the trowel. The trowel is actually kind of clumsy. Um, in this situation it might be better to use like a piece of flashing or a flat piece of metal. Very similar to a trowel but it doesn't have the handle on it and that way you would be able to get closer to the walls. That would kind of be a last tool to use, not a first tool to use. Sometimes you have to be creative and come up with your own solutions to unique problems. So I am just finishing up the last little bit of uh, mortar and contouring now. And things are looking pretty good. Just a little more fine touch. If you see a low spot, you can grab a piece of mortar from the bucket, put it in there, and trowel it smooth, filling any holes or voids. Okay, back to regular speed. see how we have a quarter of an inch basically the height of that drain cap or the drain fitting that goes down into the base and you just use those sticks as the guide And you can see that we followed our level lines over here. We've got the upper lines that we never needed to use. And that is it. So, it only used one 80 pound bag of mortar. And I would say it used about three quarters of that. So that is the new shower stall. Took us a week to build it. Makes a huge difference in the house. Instead of a half bath, now it is a three quarter bath. And again, there is the bench shower control shower head and what's nice is that even though it's a small shower because of this extra foot on the bench it feels like a much larger shower it's like a 36 by 32 shower now and this is our shelf we've got a quarter of a quarter of an inch of foot slope on that. The bench also has a quarter inch of slope. We skim coated all the walls with uh, Finset Versabond mortar. I prefer Flexbond, but Versabond is what we have. So this wall here just needs to get skim coated too. Same with that. That's Hardy Backer. The Hardy Backer is up high. I like cement board like wonder board or duroc for in wet locations and then for floors and non-wet locations i like hardy backer it's a more structural board okay so that is it dave is just uh wrapping up the laundry area here so this has been a long time in uh coming for this room to get finished out and it's a tight room so it's kind of hard to show everything that's where the 24 inch sink will go there's a window there no place for a mirror so the solution for that is this medicine cabinet opens up 
and the inside of the door has a mirror so you can still brush your teeth, comb your hair or whatever. There's the 4 inch can light above, 4 inch can light in the shower and another one over here and then the bath fan light combination there so plenty of light in the room. Okay so that is how you install the Dix shower base system the Dix one-liner and this particular one that we installed was a custom size okay we will see you on the next video okay so Dave and I got our metal corners in someone accidentally bumped into the wall I shall remain lameless but uh, yeah, we've got our mudding is underway. This is the first rough coat mud. So before long, this will be a bathroom. Full and complete. That is our shower base. And shower that we have been working on. The whole reason that I came down here. Okay.